Good morning all and welcome to First Presbyterian Church on this, the sixth Sunday uh, after Pentecost, a July 4th Sunday. We are happy to have you all here and see you all in this place on this day and delay a little bit of the burger and hot dog consumption until a little bit later. A couple of announcements uh, in your bulletins. The church office will be closed uh, Monday for the July 4th holiday. And Vacation Bible School, registration is going great. We've had a ton of turnout uh, getting kids registered, but we need volunteers to make this happen. Uh, we have a handful, but if you are able to give any amount of time and energy to help prepare, or to help lead groups. Uh, it will be fantastic to have you. You can register online. There are slips uh, on either side. All you have to do is take your phone out, open your camera, hover over the QR code, and it'll take you directly to the registration page. That is for both uh, volunteers and folks who want to register their kids to attend Vacation Bible School. We also want to extend a special welcome to Miss Yeen Kim, who is playing for us today in worship. Uh, she is blessing us with her gift of music. She's a student at Delta State studying piano and is also an international student. So we welcome her uh, to our sanctuary today. With that, let us worship God. People who call themselves Christians have gathered across the ages in all times and places to worship and praise God. Now let us stand and call ourselves into this time and place of worship and gathering on behalf of our God. All the earth honors the Lord. All the earth and have stand in awe. God is the one who knows all our hearts the one who knows everything we do. We put our hope in the Lord. Our heart rejoices in God. Lord, let your love surround us. We gather to praise you. Let us join in singing hymn 462, I Love to Tell the Story.
Please be seated. The prophet Isaiah announced, we have all sinned, not one of us is clean, but there is mercy for those who call on the name of the Lord. Therefore, trusting in God's abundant mercy and grace, let us confess our sins together. God, we come before you today in recognition that we don't always seek your will. We think of interactions and how they can boost our membership or contribute to our own success. Forgive us when we are consumed by the thoughts of the individual rather than the community. Help us to lift up the good news of grace and mercy which we have received. We lift up all these things and more into your hands, great creator God. Amen. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God is doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join in prayer. God of our fathers and mothers, you have given us the gift of your Son and your Spirit. Open our hearts to be filled by the Holy Spirit and open our minds to the teachings of your Son as the scriptures are read here today. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from Psalm 33. Listen for the word of God. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with a lyre. Make melody to him from the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle and he put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we, as we hope in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 7, and chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Listen now for the word of the Lord. God said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. 
And when he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants were impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. And you, O son of man, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns surround you and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of their words, and do not be dismayed by their looks, for they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. He said to me, Son of man, eat what is offered to you. Eat this scroll and go. Speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he gave me the scroll to eat. He said to me, Mortal, eat this scroll that I give you and fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it. And in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. He said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak my very words to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to come forward for their time of discipleship. Good to see all of you today. Is everybody ready for 4th of July hot dogs and hamburgers, fireworks, and all the good stuff? I said hamburgers. Yeah, hamburgers? Good. I'm glad. You can sit right there, buddy. Well, I want to talk to you guys about something that we don't often hear a whole lot about. And it's a word that starts with E, and it's the focus of our text and our sermon today. And the word is evangelism. Now, I say that word, and there's probably some people in the pews already squirming because I said this word. And there's a lot of things that people think about when this word is said. They think about getting more people in the church or folks randomly knocking on their door to talk to them and or unsolicited advice about how they can live as a better Christian. But evangelism is really important because Jesus tells us it's something that we need to do. It's something that we do when we tell about a good thing that has happened to us in our lives. It's sharing the good news of Jesus and the gospel and that God loves you, that God loves each and every person in this room that God loves all the earth and the creation that's called good, that's evangelism, is sharing that word to anyone and everyone that is willing to listen and saying it in a nice way, in a healthy way that may bring friends to church, but that's not the goal. The goal is to share the good news of God and that God loves each and every one of you and everyone that you're telling. So when you leave here today, I want you to tell one person, it can be your parents or your grandparents or whoever you want to tell, that God loves them and God loves you, and that is spreading the good news of the Bible. So can you put your hands together, we'll pray, and then we'll sing our song. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for all the things that you give us on this earth. Thank you for the chance to get to tell of your love and all that you do for us each and every day. Help us to leave this place and tell of all the blessings that you provide us. In your name we pray. Amen.
Thank you. Y'all can go back. Will y'all join me in prayer once more? Great Creator God, You have brought us all here today so that we may worship and honor You as best we can. Open our hearts and minds so that we may know how to better speak out in this world that which You will us to speak. In Your name we pray. Amen. I am so incredibly happy to see such a good crowd on July 4th, Sunday, our country's celebration of declaring independence from Britain, when we became a nation of rebels. In 1776, that Revolutionary War was already in full swing as the bombs were bursting in air and people were fighting for their freedom from a tyrannical king. So, in honor of that, we celebrate with hot dogs and fireworks. But the one thing that we always seem to forget was that we were a nation rebelling. Just like the Israelites in the story today being called a nation of rebels who constantly rebelled, we were created as a nation of rebels. And we continue to be a nation of rebels, often fighting for what we believe in and what is right for us. And that is a core concept of what it means to be a part of a Western capitalist world. It is inherently individualistic. And that means that it is on the individual to make good decisions for themselves. But it also means that that individual must be accountable for how their decisions affect others. Ezekiel is sent to the nation of rebels to say, Thus says the Lord God. We are given no more context than that at the start of our text today as to what will be said. But we know that what will be said won't be easy for people to hear. It may even cause them to rebel more, to be thorns and scorpions directed towards Ezekiel's task of prophesying. But whether or not these rebellious nations actually listen to Ezekiel, He is tasked to speak the good news of God, to share in the messages that God wants to give to humanity. The words that tasted as if they were honey as he ate that scroll he was given. Ezekiel was doing that little word that I told the kids that makes many of us especially in the Presbyterian denomination, squirm and become a little uncomfortable. Ezekiel was doing evangelism. Ezekiel's call story differs from other prophets as in the call versions that are recorded. God is constantly highlighting the mortality and humanity of Ezekiel in comparison to the great power and divinity of Yahweh. Throughout the book of Ezekiel, Yahweh only refers to Ezekiel as Ben Adam, son of man, rather than like Moses, Samuel, Elijah, Jeremiah, and Amos calling him by name. But it does not matter because during the call of Ezekiel, the spirit, the Ruah, entered into him when he spoke, and it set Ezekiel on his feet. The word ruach can mean spirit, wind, or breath. It's what is found in Genesis 1 that is hovering over the waters, the formless void. And this breath or spirit of God 
fills Ezekiel and lifts him onto his feet, filling him with the Holy Spirit that enables him to do God's work. The Spirit set him on his feet so that he may receive his commission to go out. The Ru'ah that lifts Ezekiel up on his feet is something that influences all of us, and it commissions all of us. Matthew 28 tells us that we should go and make disciples of all nations. And this has often been a pseudo mantra for Christian churches, especially those in the Western part of the world. And as part of the Christian denomination in America, the PCUSA had that as part of their mantra. But they have strived in the last few years to transition towards Matthew 25, a more caring notion, more caring verses, instead of focusing only on Matthew 28. We ourselves are striving to be a Matthew 25 church at this very moment. And there are people who say we need to either be a Matthew 28 church or a Matthew 25 church. But I say instead we should strive to be both. Evangelism for so long has been thought of or reduced to as a way to make disciples, to simply boost the membership of one's church or about making sure that people know how to get into heaven when they die. But in the Bible, in today's story, and throughout a multitude of stories of prophets and disciples and followers of Christ, that is not the goal of God giving the words to these individuals. It is not the reason for each of us to be commissioned by the Spirit. Ezekiel is tasked with spreading the Word of God, the good news of God's radical love for a group of rebels that time and again fall short of living the way that God desires us to live. Evangelism is something that can make us uncomfortable going out into the world and talking about why we come to church or what our faith is in God can lead us to face some hard questions ourselves. But like Ezekiel, we are called throughout the scriptures to lift up Christ in our lives, to spread the love of God, the love that God has for all of creation that has been deemed good. And the news that with this love, God is actively working in our lives, standing in those whirlwinds that surround us to be a part of the life that we have been blessed with. Ezekiel is sent out by God with words of honey in his mouth, not to create converts or increase his own following, but rather to create healthy and growing communities of faith and following of God's desired way of living into the world. The words spoken, the evangelism amongst the thorns and the scorpions is one of salvation, one of love and grace. It's the proclamation of glad tidings to those who are interested in receiving and to those who are not. God is not hiding from the fact that there are people who will not listen to the words that come from Ezekiel when he proclaims, thus says the Lord God. We see this every day as we are bombarded with news of the church losing members and lacking influence on our world and the ignoring of the gospel text. I've been asked by churches in my interview process, how do I see the church in today's world? Is the church being attacked? How does the church survive in to the future? And there are similar questions to this, but my answer has always been the same and it is still the same today. The church cannot and must not hide from the realities of this world. And it must be be willing to let God breathe into each situation. The church cannot sit idly while atrocities around the world occur. It cannot ignore that 
it and the church and all of her people have in fact hurt others throughout the years. And some of you may have been hurt by the church before. We cannot ignore this. We cannot erase this reality that we as a church have supported things in the past like slavery, the opposition of mixed race marriages, the belittlement of people who live their lives someone loving someone of the same sex. These are the realities of the church and the realities that have brought us to this time and place in which we feel as the church is in decline. And this may make you feel as uncomfortable as evangelism does when it is talked about. Yet, if we choose to practice evangelism the correct way, then we can change these realities. Then we can change the realities by accepting the past and acknowledging that the good news of the Bible is good news for all, not just a few who look and act like us. That's not how Ezekiel was told to speak the words. Ezekiel was tasked with speaking to all, to all within a rebellious nation, to those who would listen and those who would not, to those who would be thorns and scorpions towards him and those who would welcome him gladly into their house. The Holy Spirit feeling Ezekiel's body and mouth led him to speak and act and to be protected. It is a full body experience. And I realize for a bunch of Presbyterians who like to sit very still in worship, this is something that can be unnerving, but it's the truth. That this full body experience leads us to be a people who act and speak a certain way when it comes to proclaiming a news that is loving and salvation providing and one that is built upon a relationship with the triune God. The Holy Spirit has the power to open our hearts and minds and that is what we need. We need to allow our hearts and minds to be open to living the way that God calls us to live. To follow when God comes to us and says, Thus says the Lord God, let us stand and say, here I am. So that when we read these scriptures, we see and hear them as the living and breathing word of God that can speak to us in any time and place. As words of direction and guidance to share with those around us. To tell the people and the community that surround each and every one of us that God loves them. That God cares for them, that God gives us grace and stands in the hardships of our lives with us and hears our prayers no matter how small, that God wants everyone who walks through the doors of this church to feel as though they are entering a place of love and fellowship. It does not matter who they love, what they look like, what they believe, or where they come from. It only matters that they are here with us in this very moment as we speak to them our actions and words are something that are forming a healthy and loving evangelism that is not motivated by our desires for worldly attributes but rather it is motivated by the heartfelt desire to love as God loves and to follow that radical love and welcoming ministry of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus that is evangelism. That is what we can strive to do daily. Evangelism does not have to be a trigger word for us to feel awkward and nervous about what is going to come next out of our mouths. It can and it should be a lived out practice, a full body experience of the best that Christianity has to offer and something that is op offered up daily to all who surround us, that the good news held in the Bible is something that can be and is offered to a people of all time without fear of those thorns or scorpions that surround us, for God will protect us and give us the words that are as honey, 
so that we may speak. So speak those words, taste that honey, for they are divinely given and will lead the church forward. Let it be so. I invite you now to stand and proclaim that which we believe using the words printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, as we continue to strive to return to normalcy following the COVID pandemic, I am excited to say that we are now starting back passing the offering plate, giving the ushers some more work to do other than just standing in the back and greeting us as we walk in. So with that and knowing the blessings that God has given us each and every day of our lives, let us lift up our tithes and offerings to God. Let's pray. Oh God, we lift up these tithes and offerings, our hands and our feet, to you that you may use them as you see fit for our ministry to bring your will 
into this world to care for all those around us, to live as you have called us to live. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to once more join me for a time of prayer. And God, we come before you now knowing that when we speak, when we pray, there are times that they feel small, that we ourselves feel small, that there is little that we can do to be active in your world. We pray that you give us strengths in the words as sweet as honey to lift you up, to lift up your love and grace, your mercy and your caring that you have for us in this world so that we may be a mirror of all that you are. Oh God, on this, a holiday of independence, help us to use our freedom and our liberty, not just to care for those who are close, but those who are in need, that we care for all who are hungry and are sick, those who are in a time of economic hardship or uncertainty. We lift all of these people up, those who are on our prayer list, those who are on our hearts and minds, that they may be in your hands. Oh God, we lift up those in the world who need you today, those who are hungry, those who are caught in the midst of wars, those who do not have enough clean water to drink. We ask you to provide for them to bring peace and calm to areas torn apart by individualistic thinking and grabbing for power on a world of which you have called good and that we sometimes take advantage of. Oh God, we lift up so many prayers to you each and every day. We thank you for hearing all of them. We thank you for the blessings of family and friends, for children and grandparents and great-grandparents. We thank you for all that you have provided us each and every day. And in thanksgiving for that and acknowledgement of all that you do, we join together praying the prayer that your son taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand and sing hymn 300, We Are One in the Spirit.
Another thanks to Ms. Dosha and Ms. Kim for providing us with so much help in worship today, lifting up other voices and other music today. So I invite you to sit and listen to the postlude today as she's blessed us with such great music and playing. Friends, as we leave this place, know that no thorn or scorpion will get in your way, that the voice and the words as sweet as honey can come from your mouth to lift up the good news of love and welcome that God has for each and every one of us in this place. So go out knowing that you are leaving this place in peace, that the mountains and the hills will burst before you into song and the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Go in peace.